So our theme for this month of December is Leaders of Light. And that's what each and every one of us is here to be. And last week we were talking about being the lighthouse. And the way we be the lighthouse is to nurture the lighthouse, to take care of the lighthouse. I was referring to a story that I read was all about a lighthouse keeper. And just how every day that was the first thing was you can't help other people if you don't take care of the lighthouse. So we always are taking care of that lighthouse. And and we need to evolve. So we have um, this idea called evolutionary spirituality. And the idea of evolutionary spirituality is that there is this infinite presence that is always whole, perfect, and complete. And that spark, that divine presence is within all of us. So we may have different names for it. At Christmas time, we might refer to it more as the Christ light because of the season, but it's also the divine Atman, the Buddha presence, the divine soul that is within everybody. And we all have it. And so we feel that wholeness and that perfection, and yet we experience ourselves primarily as a finite being with a history and with emotions and feelings that are limited. And what evolutionary, spir- spiritual, evolutionary spirituality is about is that it's a, the idea that this infinite presence is always calling itself forward through our finite self to become more. That it's driving itself, it has been driving itself since the cosmos, since the Big Bang and since the cosmos have been birthed through Earth, through our own evolutionary period. It's constantly pulling us more and more on this to become this wholeness, to become this perfection. We feel it. And so we do this, there are many vehicles in which we are becoming more and more of our self, our whole self. Uh, his, what was his name? Gothney? He's uh, written a book called The Unknown Pilgrim. And he says we feel our inherent deficiency. And so when we go on a journey, or when we have dreams, it's to fulfill that part of us that feels deficient. And that would be the evolutionary spirituality. It's this pull to say, I feel that finiteness, and our dreams become a primary vehicle to push us into this new realm. So we don't just do peace. We don't just be light. We're always growing to become greater light on every level and dimension of our being. That's the ideal of heaven on earth, the idea of first cause and form, where everything becomes that perfection of the infinite spirit becomes more and more who we are on this divine infinite plane. And so our dreams are a very important part of that. And as I mentioned in my email newsletter, that um, we all have dreams every night. There's a reason for that. There's nothing that happens in our life that is by accident. That dreaming is part of our existence. It's showing us realities beyond what we could otherwise know. Anything is possible in a dream. So what we have to know is what is our dreams? Do you know what your dreams are? And the, dream be- the difference between a dream and a fantasy is a fantasy is something you just think about but you don't move on. A hobby is something that will that you can do and play at, but it doesn't necessarily change you. A dream is that which is what's going to change you. A dream is that which is you're going to give, you feel so deeply that you want to create this in the world. You want to bring it into creation. You want to birth this new idea in your life that it will change you, just as when we birth a child, it changes us. There's no one who can stay the same after birthing a child. Your life changes forever because of that birthing process. The same is true with our dreams. Our dreams are as important as any child. Our dreams are about exactly what bringing a child is into the world. It's about bringing a tangible, divine idea that you can't see, hear, taste, touch, or smell. And by daily giving yourself to it, bringing it into greater, greater, tangible form to create heaven on earth. So again, the question is, is do you know what your dreams are? Can you, can you see, feel, hear, taste, and touch what you want to bring into form? And how committed are you to them? So part of cleaning the lighthouse, like last week, and taking care of the lighthouse is being honest with ourselves. That's what's so- cleaning the windows. That we, w- even if we're not, can always be honest out there, we have to at least at the very, at very minimum tell ourselves the microscopic truth of what we really, really want. Because the dream, for it to be birthed from that invisible source into the world, Cannot do that if we're, have cl- if we're pretending. We're pretending to ourselves or to some other person. This is the dream I should have versus what do I authentically have? What is my authentic dream? So we have the, the parable of Jesus and Mary, and it 
comes in a dream. It comes in a vision through purity. That vision for our life, that dream, needs to be birthed through a pure place. We need to conceive the dream for our life from a pure place. What do I really want? What do I authentically want? What am I willing to let my life be changed for? So, so here's some ways to find out what our authentic dreams are. One, and this is, by the way, this is a great time of year to do this because we are talking about birthing the Christ, birthing the Buddha, birthing the divine child that is within everyone in this room, the divine mother, father, Mary, Joseph, energy is in all of us. You take eight, two, uh, three pages of eight and a half by ten paper and you write three pages without stopping, stream of consciousness. And sometimes that's very hard for people because, so you, the idea is you write three, pa- three pages without taking your pen off the paper ever. You just keep writing and keep writing. And the idea is that, that the more you write, things will start popping out of your subconscious mind. You don't, one, t- one thing we realize is how much we edit from our thought to the actual form. So no editing. And so you can't stop and think about it. You can't say right or wrong or does this make sense. You just keep writing. Three pages without stopping. And so you'll just get a sense that it's just the beginning of just getting a sense of things that might be hidden, that might pop out in those three pages, especially by the third page. And the reason why I say eight and a half by ten paper is because sometimes if you do three pages of little paper, it's not going to get you very far. You want to do some serious writing. So that's the first place. Just, just to start with stream of conscious, let it out. The second place is then to imagine yourself when you're about to leave this planet. How do you want to... What do you want to have given this planet when you leave? Not only how do I want to feel, because that can be a little bit self-absorbed. What do I want to have left the planet when I leave here? What's the gift that I want to have brought? And that's going to bring you into big picture thinking, big picture ultimate thinking. So you have the stream of conscious, blah, blah, blah. Things might pop out that you might edit, normally edit it because you think they're bad. Then you're in the big picture, spiritual picture. So you do those two things. This is all at one sitting, <laughs> if you can. But it's over this next week. <laughs> Not that I'm limiting you at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know with all your free time. And then from there, you ask yourself the question, and you go more into the meditation. Now you are listening. Now you are, after you get all the garbage out, you think big. Now you just let all that go, and you just feel into your heart space, and you ask yourself, what do I really, really want? What do I, not kind of want, not sort of want, what do I really, really want? And this gets into the authentic place. Because maybe I don't authentically want to change right now. Maybe authentically I don't want to have a dream. People go through dry phases, and I think there is the dark night of the soul, but sometimes those dark night phases, those, those phases where we don't have a dream, it's because we resist, because we know that dream is going to change us. So we say, well, I don't really want a dream right now. And say, well, do I want a dream? So it's a wonderful time to contemplate how much do you want a dream? Are you willing to write down on paper. And I'm going to talk, I'm talking about or write on paper or on a computer because I think if it just stays in head, we stay in fantasy, that it just goes over around and around in our head. They talk about um, that people who have fantasies actually don't change their life at all. And we say change your thinking, change your life, but part of changing the thinking is then taking action on it. But if you're just sort of fantasizing up here, it's like junk food for the brain. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't feed you. It doesn't do anything. So by writing it down on paper or on your computer, or you could tell somebody, but even that's temporary because they walk away. Something that you can hold on to, that makes it more tangible. What do I really, really want? Now, what I really, really want may or may not have to do with how I want to feel or what I want to give to the world when I die. It may be just a step to get there because what what I really, really want has to be present tense. It can't be what I really, really want 10 years from now. It's got to be right now. There's got to be immediacy to it. When you give birth to a child, it's not, what do I really, really want for my child when they're 18? And I'll just sort of slide by those 18 years. <laughs> it's what I want, what, what do I really, really want even now as it's, 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 a chi- it's a little baby and it doesn't even do anything, it just sits there. <laughs> what, do I, what do I really, really want in this moment? 
And there's stages, and there's stages in our life. So Jack and I were talking about dreams <clears throat> this past week, and it's different when you're older. <clears throat> Your dreams change. Birthing them might seem a little bit more difficult because you've been around the block. You've already had dreams. You've had failures. You've had successes. So starting new and fresh. So that's the part of just clearing. That's why we're doing the clearing the lighthouse, taking care of the lighthouse, always first. Because that purification, that, that's why I like the whole story of Mary and Joseph, because Mary really represents a purity, a place of, of a pure consciousness. And that's what we want to be doing, is creating a pure consciousness. So that dream, even if we, no matter where we are in life, no matter what stage we are in life, we can come through it from fresh eyes, through fresh awareness, through freshness of spirit. That's why it's what do I authentically want now? Because we know what I wanted last year or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. What do I really authentically want now? And so we write that down. And then we can write down our goals to it. It's going to change us, just like having a human being changes us. No one can stay the same. When you have a dream and you give yourself to that dream, it's going to change you. And your relationship to that dream might change over time. But you don't quit when, it's, when it gets hard. So when people say, I make a New Year's resolution and by January I'm not doing it anymore, that means it was a fantasy. That means you kind of wanted it, but it really wasn't worth all the struggle. Or, you know, it didn't really work. So we're not talking about New Year's resolutions. We're not talking about fantasies. We're not talking about things when it gets a little challenging, we let it go. Anyone uh, who had a, has a child, you know you can't do that. But if we look at our dreams with the same preciousness that we see Mary and Joseph looking at their child, they knew that this was a presence that, that was beautiful, that was holy, that was sacred. What if you looked at your dreams with that much preciousness? What if you considered your dream, whatever that dream is that you really, really want, as not just something frivolous, not just as something that, oh, it might make me feel better or might make the world a better place, but it can come and go, but with the idea that this dream has power to it that if I develop it day in and day out, and when we start seeing it, we don't just throw it aside effortlessly. We don't just say, oh, that didn't work. We can't, because we know we've just birthed an incredibly beautiful, powerful vision or dream for our life that needs, to, needs our attention every day. And when it gets hard or when I get tired, I might take a break, but I return to it. This, did, some, did some people of you get uh, interesting good letters this past week, some of you? From the burning bowl? <laughs> you didn't get yours yet? I mailed it. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to give it away, but I thought by sure, but you'd have it by now. <laughs> you got yours? What was it like for those of you who got your letters? What? It was confusing. <laughs> what was it like? Yeah. It was awesome. You like the letter? It's fantastic. Did you like re reading it? I didn't open it yet. Oh, you haven't opened it yet? Oh. oh, okay, good. That's great to really take it in. So we set the intention. So we did that we, last year, and we set these intentions. And with our dream, I was thinking about the dream, though. So there's one thing about setting our intentions and letting it go. But with, like, it'd be like having a child and say, well, I'll birth you, and then I'm going to let you go and see how you're doing in a year from now. Our dreams require nurturance every day. So we actually do, you know, we talk about, we, we think about goals and say, well, they're just temporary, and people live from one goal, and then you reach it, and then it, as if it's nothing. But that's not true. When we come from that divine conception, every dream that we have is important, and it's evolving us. It changes us. We become different people, authentic dreams. So even though we have like little goals along the way and it feels maybe mental or directive, the idea is that by giving our heart to it, when we see it as a precious gift that's been given to us, to us, that we were asked to parent these dreams. Mary and Joseph is within every one of us. We are all parents of our own dreams. And we have to treat our dreams with that same preciousness that we see Mary and Joseph treating the Christ child. 
we talk about and we thought treating all children that way. What, what would it be like if we tr- treat all children as if they were the Christ presence? But I think we need to also treat all of our dreams with that same preciousness, to, with care and consideration, where we are continually referring, how am I doing in my parenting skills and nurturing my dream? How am I showing up when it's giving me a hard time and fighting back at me? Do I keep going with it? Do I keep... Do I change my relationship with it? That is something we are in a relationship with. It's a dynamic and vital energy force. This is evolutionary spirituality. This is about changing us. Because ultimately, you know, in the Bhagavad Gavita, it talks about not being concerned with the effect, whether the result is good or bad. Because always, always, it is good if it's coming from God and you are giving your love to it. We have all these sports analogies, some success, some that aren't. We see, and we like them because they're dreams. People have a dream, and sometimes they fulfill them, and sometimes they don't. The Warriors were fulfilling a dream for a while till last night. <laughs> but they did really well, and we get excited for them, right? And, and I think one of my favorite one you all know is um, Wilma Rudolph, the woman who had polio, and she ends up becoming the fastest woman in the world. And then there's someone like Prefontaine, who ran the mile, never won a gold medal. And yet you had Hollywood fighting over who who had the rights to make the film of his life. Well, why does anyone want to make the film of his life? He didn't win any medals. Because he changed how people looked at the mile, because he didn't have the body for it. He brought so much spirit and intensity to what he was doing. He cared about it so deeply that everyone else started caring about it. And he became this incredible light and life, even though he died at a young age through a car accident. So he didn't get the goals that he wanted. He died early. In every way, we could say that was a failure. And yet Hollywood's fighting for the script to make the movie of his life because of the spirit behind it, because of the care and the intention that actually changed things that we're still talking to him decades after he, about him decades after he died. I was just listening. And what really got me on this thing about success and failures, I was listening. Maybe someone else heard this as well on NPR. They were talking about all the failures in science. There's a gentleman who's written a book, and he said, for all the success that we always talk about, there's hundreds and hundreds of failures that no one ever knows about. And he said, scientists have to come to actually love and welcome failure. Because every time you have a failure, it's teaching them something. It's a, it's a new learning experience. So there's ultimately no failure because it's always guiding us and teaching us. They don't give up and say, well, I wasn't meant to have this. This really wasn't God's dream because it's too hard or because I keep having failure. If that's, again, we go back, that's why this conception part is so important. That's why, do I really, really want this? Because if it's really that deep of a dream... We're going to hit big walls, and we're going to come at it this way, and it's not going to work, and we're going to come at it this way, and it's not going to work, and we're going to want to give up. But if we know in that conception that this is what I really, really want, that I don't care how many walls I come across, I'm going to keep at it, that that's the part that's going to change us. That's the part that's going to evolve us. That's going to part that's going to show deep, deep, deep down, not just on the surface, who and what we really are as divine beings of light, where everything is possible, just like in our dreams at nighttime, where everything is possible. What do I really, really want? And we give ourselves to that. Now we can look at Jesus. Life is a failure. He died early, 33 years old. His poor mother. Father, too. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Mary and Joseph. They cared about him. They knew who he was. I am sure in their ideas, ideals for their child's dream, it was not to get crucified at age 33. They saw a possibility with his life that was transcendent, and they gave themselves to it and, and probably had to change in relation to it as he grew older. But ultimately... It, it ended early. Their vision of what was possible got cut off real fast. Was that a failure? Was Martin Luther King's life a failure? Malcolm X's life a failure? Gandhi's life a failure? Although he still lived to a ripe old age, Gandhi. Their life isn't a failure because it's still living. When we are birthing the eternal and the infinite into form through our dreams, and everyone here is a Mary and Joseph, as a parent of God's dreams, there is a dream that is birthing itself, wants to be birthing itself through you, from the divine, not just humanly. And we don't have to worry about whether it's humanly or divine. If it's something that we really, really want, do it. 
Don't worry about it. If you really, really want it, it's coming from the divine and there's a reason for it. There is a reason for it. And it will teach you what that reason is as you go along. You might change what that reason is, but if it's something you really, really want, it's supposed to be there. Don't abort it. Don't look in another direction. You want it for a reason. Don't judge it. It's not spiritual enough. It's not big enough. It's important. When Jesus died, there's like no record of it. And they, they, I was listening to this New Testament class professor, and he was saying there's one little blip record in the, in the Roman Empire that might be Jesus. It's not totally clear that it's Jesus, but they think that's Jesus. So on the official re- record, uh, record keeping of the Roman Empire, he basically was like a blip that did not exist. He was very important for the people, that small group of people with whom he was impacting. But in general, in the history of the Roman Empire, he was a blip. And I was thinking about what would that be like today, and I thought of a friend of mine and maybe some of you remember, I don't remember, she was advocating for someone who got the death sentence in Georgia. And apparently there was a lot of people who felt this was unjust, and they were fighting for him not to get the death sentence. And she sent stuff to me and to sign petitions and to, to have, them over, have it be overturned. And it was, it was a campaign that I saw on Facebook and, and through her, through other vehicles. But it didn't get overturned, and he got the death penalty, and he died. And I'm th- I was thinking about this. I thought, well, wow, it's two years later. I don't even remember his name. It's a blip. It's a blip. That can be our dream. Like, nobody even knows that I just gave my whole heart and soul to this whole thing. But when it's eternal, it lasts. We are not in charge of the, in charge of the internal divine energy. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, both were changed by their dreams. It continued to evolve. They weren't the same at the end as they were at the beginning. They died early. Their lives were cut off early. And yet we see it continuing to evolve in Black Lives Matter. We see, I see quotes in, uh, of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X's all the time to inspire the, the continued process for equality, for equal rights for all beings. When we are birthing the eternal, our life might pass Jesus' life may pass, but the Christ principle, the Christ ideal, is ever-present, being birthed over and over. Your dream is not a temporary quick fix. It's not just a temporary, oh, and if I don't get it, it doesn't matter, or oh, it's not going to matter to anybody else, or it matters just to my family. When you are birthing the divine, which everyone here has that potentiality to birth the divine through your dream, it has lasting impacts. No one here is an island. We're all interconnected. We don't even know sometimes how we're connected to other people when we live our dreams. We give ourselves to a dream. We pass on and, and somehow it's connected to someone else's dream. The, the guy, uh, Prefontaine, he ran the mile. In our mind, we could say, well, that's not very important. That's not Martin Luther King working for world peace. He inspires people to get healthy. Suddenly the jogging phase goes off. His coach is the guy who co-created Nike. Just do it. Got people out exercising. Every part of this earth matters. Every aspect, every dream is interconnected with other people's dreams and creating a better world. That's evolutionary spirituality. So if you are birthed into this world, you are a divine idea that was birthed, and I give thanks for every one of your births, And within you is also the mother-father-God principle, the Mary and Joseph principle, if we want to bring it down, to parent a dream, a divine idea. Find out what that is. Let it change you. Let it grow you. Let it evolve you so that you are being a gift to yourself and to the world in which you are around. And if you're already living your dream, allow this time to refresh you, to, again, go back to the lighthouse, clean the windows, Purify your consciousness. Am I still, do I still really, really want this? Do I still really, really want to give myself to this dream? Have I shifted it all? Have I, do I have a new way of seeing it? Am I in a different relationship? But let yourself be new with the dream. If you're already working towards a dream, let yourself be new with it. Be clean with it. You are the parents of your dreams. Give yourself to it. Honor yourself 